Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. All right, everybody, welcome to Positive Power Double X Acoustic Media. Yeah, we're a little late, but we are here. What's going on, Dr. Kelly? How you feeling, sir? Praise the Lord. We're feeling great. Mr. Jerry Royce, the pool of that turkey. We've been walking, though, sir. Praise God. Thank you for having us again on this powerful platform, sir. Amen, amen. So we're ready to go when you guys are ready. We are live on Facebook Live, Spreaker, and YouTube. So let's have some fun, y'all. Let's teach tonight. Let's teach. Amen. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard, amen, one of the most powerful voices, amen, out there in radio land, Mr. Jerry Royce. We thank you all for joining us joining with us on another episode of next man up right here on the award-winning positive power worldwide christian music in iheart and also on spotify i'm your host on this powerful uh next man up weekly summit amen we're going to get right into we have some powerful topics coming up amen but without further ado i also like to acknowledge i was very powerful amen and spiritually motivated men of God, amen, artists and producers, songwriter, it's a very, very anointed man of God, very humble, Mr. Miguel Perfect, amen, and talk show host, Apostle John Rawls. We're going to open this show up, amen, with a prayer, amen, to our nation by the Apostle John Rawls, special man of God, a man of de- dedicated man of God. And we're going to close it out with a powerful prayer on tonight. With the artist and producer songwriter Miguel Perfect. Without further ado, praise God, Apostle John Ross. Amen. Pray to the nation, sir. Lord, we give you glory and we thank you, Jesus, for this holiday season. We thank you for the gathering that we were able to have. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor for another year together. Lord, we ask you to touch and come in to this next Man Up Summit. Lord, teach us about forgiveness and teach us how to seek forgiveness, my God, by the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we ask you, God, to rain down on us your Holy Holy Spirit, we ask you to crush every demonic force that will try to enter into this broadcast. God, we crush it, and we release your anointing, we release your power by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Artist, producer, songwriter, Miguel Perfect. Talk to us, sir, for a couple of minutes, sir. What's going on on this beautiful Thanksgiving? And we're going to come back, amen, with Apostle John Ross. Beautiful prayer. Beautiful prayer. Hey, man, ladies and gentlemen, you're with us. We thank you for tuning in with us right here on Next Man Up. We have a powerful t- subject on tonight. Hey, amen. And we're going to get right to that. But we want to hear from our panels amen for a couple minutes tonight to see what's going on in their world amen artist producer songwriter miguel professor talk to us sir man good evening gentlemen i'm i'm always just humbled and honored to be uh invited to you know this platform and anywhere else god just take me to because he just knows how to remind me that you know i i put something in you you know and, and i need I need you to share it. I need you to speak to my people, people that don't know me, people that need to hear from me. And so uh, I'm just thankful for being put in the position because, you know, once upon a time, I I try to put myself in a position and I ended up in a position where I didn't want to (laughs) be. Amen. You know, Amen. because I'm, I'm I'm doing things my way, you know, and and, uh, my way was the worst way. You know, but thank God, you know, for Jesus Christ that he is the way, you know, and if I just follow him, you know, my, my, my footsteps will be ordered by him, you know, and wherever my feet tread, I'll, I'll possess the land. So I just, you know, want to want want to let people know, you know, out there in the world, you know, uh, those that are discouraged, those that are 
brokenhearted, those that are bound by various spirits and, and are looking for a way out. You know, it's Jesus yes, is that way. He, he is the one we look to. You know, we're, 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 we haven't made a way for ourselves. You know, Jesus has made the way for us. He's made it possible, you know, for us to be restored, to be redeemed, to be clothed in our right mind, to have purpose, a direction, and most important, know that we're loved. Um, yes, the sir. world is yes, really, sir. really suffering because they don't understand the love of Jesus and what he, you know, has done on our behalf. And especially in this holiday season, uh, my brothers keep, uh, keep the families of, of those who are uh, suffering losses through suicide and um, those type uh-huh. of things. Um, in these holiday seasons, I, I just recently had a friend whose mother passed away the day before. Um, so, you know, these are celebrative times, but they're also yes, hard sir. times for many other people. And, and hey, we just want to remind others that our prayers are with them and that Jesus is the hope of glory. So God bless you, brothers. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. You just heard from artist and producer, songwriter, Miguel Perfect. Amen. What a beautiful, somber speaking. Amen. As he shared his spirit. Amen. With you all, especially for those who are without and who are going through this season speaking of those, their loved ones. However, I like the way he said it, amen. God gives us that heart, amen, to also think about them and pray for them. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miguel Perfecto. Very, very eloquent, amen. Talk show host, amen, award-winning Apostle John Ross. Amen. How are you doing, sir, on this Thanksgiving, sir? I feel blessed and highly favored for the Lord to bless me to see another holiday season. Greetings to everybody. Greetings to you, Mr. Profect, Dr. Royce. We give God glory and we give God praise for another Next Man Up Summit. I tell you, I am just honored and blessed to be with everyone from week to week. And holy greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am the Apostle Designate Minister John E. Ross, lead minister and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries and 2018 Image Award winning and Spin Award winning Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show creator and host. And I am blessed to be here. This week we had Brother Jay Windsor is our current episode that we have released on speaker.com. So if you have not had a chance to listen over the holidays, please go there and listen to Dr. Jay Windsor as he releases a word about the anointed passionate worshiper and i tell you that was a blessed episode and remember now thy creator has been nominated for five rhythm of the gospel awards for 2019 in category 21 urban contemporary song of the year 22 holy hip-hop rmp song of the year Category 24, Alternative Christian Song of This Year. Category 39, Traditional Male Vocalist of the Year. And Category 56, Best Performance by a Male. Voting has begun. So please give your brother here some support by going to www.therhythmofgospelawards.com and cast your vote for me, Brother John, Minister John E. Ross, in each and every one of those categories. Hallelujah. Praise God, man. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that powerful update, man. Uh, let's talk to the Lord. Hey, man, I had the honor of being on this on this gentleman's show, talk show, uh, Apostle John Ross. Let's talk to the Lord. Hey, Amen. Out there. What is that, John Ross? Hey, Amen. W-A-T-C. What is the Christian, your, your channel, sir? WYTV7, WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. Absolutely. It was an honor being on that platform, sir. Praise God. And I thank you for just making us feel right at home. Amen. And we 
develop a powerful bond, man. And that's what it's about, sir. Amen. Once again, thank both of you gentlemen for we we do have a powerful subject, amen. But before we really get into this subject, amen, uh, we do thank our reviewers for tuning in, amen. Uh, We did have some difficulties, however, the prayer was right on point, amen. The devil doesn't have anything here, but we want to hear from our producer, amen, Mr. Jerry Royce. This gentleman is a profound, remarkable man of God. Without further ado, we want to hear from him, amen, to just kind of share with us, amen, what's going on in Batman's world, amen, and on the Positive Power platform, amen. He's going to give us some updates. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jerry Royce live. What's going on, family? What's up? Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and sharing the file. And we always we look forward to Friday nights. We, we're going to start calling it the Triple Threat. That's right. Triple Podcast. Yes, sir. That's right. Start with Next Man Up. Then we got Late Night with Jerry Royce live and Paula G. And leads right into the Christian Party line with the Ladies of Radio. And I'm going to tell you, all it's starting to set a twin, uh, mm, a twin, a trend. We're starting to see um, other radio uh, stations starting to uh, collaborate with other um, podcasters to, to bring it all together, which I think is a great thing because, you know, we can't do this alone. Just like you guys, we're, we're collaborating. You know, we've come from different worlds. Yes, sir. And, um, and we, it's all for, you know, to glorify the Lord. You know, it's not, it's not about competition, yes. you know. And one thing about, you know, people of color, we've always been, you know, it's been put in our in our brains and programmed for us to to compete against each other, and and, and it's not the way it's supposed Amen. to be, you know. And there's only really one race, according to what I've been hearing, and that's the human race. So, um, I heard something that yes, they say, and the, the word um, race wasn't really wasn't really put out there until around the 1400s by the Spaniards. So, um, because they were trying to, um, <laughs> they couldn't classify people according to their religion because they couldn't tell, so they had to use. Um, they had to use color. So anyway, so that was some deep history right there. If you want to check it out, <laughs> it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, the the big update is y'all. Um, we we're into into our second season with my journey with Paula G. And if you guys get a chance to catch out some of the episode, we got live performances with Dwayne Gott, uh, uh, Spirit to Spirit with Denny and Michael Jenkins out of D.C. Uh, Dwayne is out of New Jersey. Uh, we got live performances with uh, Kent Osborne coming out of Atlanta and a young lady named Shirley Woodley. She's out of Baltimore. And just to name a few, and we have many more. And oh, Stephen Turner, he's out of Baltimore. So we're hoping this is going to start a wave of um, you know, opening her show with live performances. We have, we have built a small sound stage to, 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 uh, you know, the, to handle some of the uh, solo artists and, and, and we have big productions that's, that's over, that's going to be happening at a college campus. So if you're somebody looking for, you know, you got a band and you want to bring them, let us know. We booked you guys. And, 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 and the big thing is you're going to be in the, in the, on a network in Atlanta, which, it's, it's spectacular right now. These people are really doing a wonderful job uh, promoting. Uh, right now, they, they, they just opened up the show on Sunday night starting at 8 Not Sunday night. Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, which is their great programming on Sunday for WATC. If you guys got 57.2, if you don't live in Atlanta, you can you can go out to their, their app, WATC. Look for w a t c 2 t o o and you, you'll find that whole lineup, everything streaming live. Um, Paul is on at 8 o'clock on Sundays, and then you catch it again on Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. So that's that's like a real big deal for us, man, um, having an opportunity to be on national TV like that. Um, what else we got going on, Doc? Oh, next man up. Man, Doc going to be planning the next man up conference. So if you are brother, yep. whether you, I don't care if you're South Carolina, Atlanta, New York, you going to be part of this? Hit us up. We're going to be starting some meetings real soon, some production meetings to start planning this thing. Uh, we've been talking about this for a good while now, and and we feel like it, that, sure. that time should be 2019. Right, Doc? Does that sound right? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. That's 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 God's vision for the men right. of God. That's right. Amen. That's, that's what we need to do to get back to a producer. That's right. And another big opportunity for everybody to get a chance to meet and collaborate and network. We're going to be and Batman's coming to Atlanta in April. I'm uh, waiting for the dates from Paula G. We're going to we're planning a meet and greet 
And it's going to lead into her birthday party. So she's going to be celebrating her birthday. And we're going to have artists performing. We're going to have all this stuff. So it's going to be great. So if you're interested in that, hit up Paula G. Inbox her so she can put you on the list. So she can start planning. Uh, this event is an all-day event. And that's going to be awesome, too. So you get a chance to meet Dr. Kelly and Shay and hey, Paula man. G and uh, a bunch of people. I think uh, the whole Beyond, Beyond Defense enterprise is going to be there. So that's going to be awesome. You got David Benton. You got to meet David Benton. If you if you don't meet nobody else, you got to meet David Benton. <laughs> I think you met him before, Miguel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think he was at the um, Ingara Awards. So anyway... Mm. Phenomenal people. Dr. Kelly met him, and he can tell you what kind of guy he is. And also, Stephen Marshall should be there also. He's always asking us when the next event. So you got to come up to meet these guys. Ken Osborne. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get Reed, the whole You First management. We try to, we tr- we're working on trying to get them there because I know they always busy. they actually cruising and everything. So well, this is the kind of stuff that's happening for independent gospel artists right now. So. Uh, some phenomenal things happen. God is definitely working. Of course, with Next Man Up, we, we want to include uh, some performances and stuff like that as well. So uh, me and Dr. Kelly are going to be talking about that and, 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 and um, make, making that thing happen for everybody. That will happen. That will. That's, that's been on the, yes, on the list for a while. Right, Doc? Man, yes, sir. God's vision. It must be fulfilled. That's right. Man is out there now. <laughs> so we got to do it. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. So, Praise God. So thank yes, you, sir. everybody, for uh, your time. And definitely tune in tonight. We got Stacy Bryant. She's uh, with Praise 108. She's going to be joining us at midnight and then uh, 1130 with Paula G. We're going to have uh, Miss Tiffany. You know, Miss Tiffany has uh, been nominated for Stella Awards and Grammy Awards. So mm-hmm. come on, check her out so she can talk about the magic that's been happening in her career. All right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor. Well, so amen. That's the praise report. Amen. Amen. Power. Amen. Power. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from one of the most powerful producer literally a man that i have met a man mr jerry royce a man very very humble but profound and serious man of god when it comes to his craft right here engineering this this brother man this brother sometimes i really think it's two or three of him a man and he 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 made it he he put out a video where I just knew it was like two of him, a Batman and a Jerry Roy. <laughs> and I, I was very, very impressed with that. Amen. <laughs> so this gentleman is very creative, and I, and I really thank him. I've grown to, amen, grow close to him like a brother, and we really amen. thank him for allowing us to, you know, just be on this platform, amen. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get to this powerful topic, this powerful subject on tonight. Amen. Coming out of Matthew's gospel. Amen. And once again, we thank, amen, our panels. Uh, I must uh, repeat that once more. Amen. You you all are getting ready to hear from them. Mr. Artist, Mr. Miguel Perfect Esparza. Esparza, amen, and talk show host, Mr. Amen. Apostle John Ross. Amen. We're going to be talking about forgive and seek forgiveness on tonight. Forgive and seek forgiveness. Amen. Coming out of Matthew five twenty one through 23. This was right after Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in with us once again, Matthew five twenty one through 23. This was right after men of God. Amen. As you're tuning in with us. Praise God. Good evening, Mr. Keith Solomon. Amen. Bless you for tuning in with us. Amen. This powerful t- subject matter is very important for us as leaders, literally, <laughs> leaders, amen, to tune in, amen, and, and kind of elaborate and share with our viewers our experience, amen, of dealing with anger or being around those, amen, who has anger all the time, just, just angry. Actually, this is what Jesus was talking about when he was talking about forgiveness right here, and Matthew five twenty one through twenty three. If you allow me to set this up, gentlemen, five minutes, Amen. This is Jesus speaking in the twenty first verse out of Matthew five twenty one through twenty three. And the commentary reads as such in the twenty first verse. Jesus is speaking, you have heard that it was said to those of the old. He's he's actually teaching the disciples, but he's also rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
He said, you have heard that it was said to those of the old, you should not murder, and whosoever murder would be in danger of the judgment. And he went on to say in that 22nd verse, but I say unto you that whoever is angry, that, that word right there, angry with this brother or his sister, without a cause, without any cause, just angry, just just walking around angry. Brothers, y- y'all seen people like that. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> just, just angry for no reason. And, and, and then just want to kill people. Take them out of their native land. I'm not going to even go there. But, <laughs> hey, man, he said, shall mm-hmm. be in danger of judgment. And whoever, whosoever say to his brother, Raka, and that's dangerous right there, shall be in dangers of the council. And then he went on to say, but whoever says, amen, you fool shall be in danger of hell's fire. And Jesus went on. Now he's changing his tone right here in the 23rd verse. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, your gift, now watch this, your gift, and there remember that your brother has something against you, your gift. It's against you. Amen. He said, leave your gift there before the altar and then go on your way. First, basically what he was saying, but it must be reconciled by your brother. Many, many people have gone through this life, amen, by disrespecting you and never came back to apologize. So this is where he's going with this, amen. And then, and then offer you another gift. And I'm going to take this just one scripture further, amen, to the 25th. He said, agree with your adversary quickly. Now watch what he's saying. While you are not on the way with him, let your adversary deliver you to the judge, to judge. And the judge, amen, you uh, 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 over to officers. Here, here's what Jesus is really saying, gentlemen. Amen. He's kind of saying this. He's kind of teaching, but he's rebuking at the same time. When Jesus said, I want to go back up there to that that 22nd verse, he said, but I say to you, whoever, I want to talk about that just for a minute, whoever. And the reason why this is important, because the spirit wants to, he wants to teach on tonight. Teach on tonight. Amen. When Jesus said, but I say unto you, I say unto you, he was not doing away with the law or adding, amen, his own belief. What he was saying, rather, he was giving a fuller understanding of why God made the law in the first place. For example, here we go. For example, Moses said, remember back in the Old Testament, back then, Exodus 20 and 13, when Moses said, you should not murder. That, that was part of the commandment. So Jesus taught that we should not even become angry enough to kill. That's what he was saying right there. Amen. But he when he stretched it a little further, he said, yet they were angry enough with Jesus. Now, this is the Pharisees. The Pharisees was angry enough to Jesus with Jesus. Amen. To kill him, to kill, literally to kill him. Amen. So here, Jesus was just speaking, gentlemen. He was just teaching them that killing is a terrible sin. Anger is a terrible sin. Amen. The anger is a, is is one of those things that we must control as leaders. We got we got to get that thing. We got to get that thing in control. <laughs> Amen. He was talking. He was giving an example of murder. And we as leaders, amen, we should avoid all that stuff. Anger, hatred, amen, because we represent in the kingdom. Amen. We, we talk about that in, in, in Matthew 5, 21 and 2. Now, amen. for those who are tuning in with us, if you, want to, if you want to do some extra studying, continue to read this powerful book, Matthew 5. You can go on and read to Matthew 5, 26, 23 to 26. It talks about offering, amen, your regular gifts, amen. We have a right relationship with God and others. So you want to go ahead and read on through that, amen, in, in uh, Matthew 5, 27 through 30. He talks about adultery, avoiding adultery, keeping our hearts from lusting, 
and being faithful. And he take he took it a little further. These were sermons, gentlemen. These were sermons. These were these were powerful topics, amen, that we must be prepared to teach as well. Amen. He went a little further also in Matthew five and thirty one to thirty two. He talked about divorce, being legally married. Amen. Live out our marriage commitments. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Matthew 5, 31 and 32. You know, some voices are, are, are you know, they, they end very bitterly, very angry. Am I right about this, gentlemen? Yeah. Amen. And lastly, yeah, yeah. And now we're not going to talk about these. These are just examples of what these Jesus is teaching. Amen. We're going to stick close. We're going to stick with our text on tonight about forgiveness. Amen. Praise God. So without further ado, gentlemen, I want to I want to give this to the next man up. I want to pass this to the next man up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Artist, producer, Miguel, perfect in your own way. However, God leads you in your spirit. Amen. Um, what uh, as leaders, why is it wise to resolve conflict peacefully? If anybody can tell this, you can tell it, my brother. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we really appreciate you too, sir. We really appreciate you on this platform. Amen. Uh, Amen. As leaders, why is it wise to resolve conflict peacefully? Well, you know, I, I think of a, of a couple of things. I think of, um, first and foremost, Jesus said that the world will know that you're my disciples by the love that you have one towards another. Amen. And, and so I think of an example first, the example of love. Um, I think of um, growth as well. And I think of answered prayers because see, when, when we're at odds with one another and with people, Mm. You know, we, it doesn't, it doesn't help us to grow. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, if, if anything, it stunts our growth, you know, as men and women of God, when we have ops towards other people and, and, and I'm sure we're not going to dive too deep into the causes, but mm. a lot of the causes we know that they stem from immature perspectives, Mm. You know, mm. especially mm. within the church, many of the conflicts within the church, it stems from people's lack of maturity in the faith. Um, unfortunately, you know, nowadays we don't have too many people that are, um, you know, versed themselves in, in the word of God. You know, we, many of us rely on, on the Sunday preaching and teaching that wow. the pastor has given to us Come versus on. our own personal relationship um, that we have to. Uh, 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 you know, tend to. So yes, that happens too, right? And so when we're not growing and when we have, when we have bitterness, we have ox towards people, guess what? That hinders our prayers too. You know, yeah. Jesus made that very clear. You, you have to go and reconcile. You, you, in other words, reconciliation, that's going to cause you, that, that means you have to confront something. Come on. And unfortunately in today's society, you know, many of us, um, Although I am an advocate for social media, I understand there's also downfalls to social media. And that's part of it, that we would rather hide and get, and get you know, get our fingers fired up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and hide Amen. behind our devices because we don't want to face people. Mm. You know, and, and that happens, and that comes from a spirit of fear when we shouldn't, especially amongst Christians, because perfect mm. love cause, casts out fear. See, God's love causes us to draw towards one another, not run from each other. Love pursues one, a person. Jesus made it very clear he'll leave the 99 to go get the one. So we understand that love pursues. And so yes. when I love you, doctor, I don't want to beef with you. Praise God. I want us to be at peace because I don't want your prayers hindered. I don't want my prayers hindered. I want to grow. And I want to show the world what it is to love your brother. Amen. Yes. So those, those yes. dynamics come to my spirit. And, you know, coming from an incarcerated atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. we put these into practice. 
In prison, you can't run from each other. Mm. You're, you're too confined. You're in a box. You're in a, you're in a fish tank. So wow. there's no so-and-so, Brother Ross, you know, kick me off. I'm out of this church, and I'm going to go jump to the next church. And Or yes, Sister uh, Susie got me mad at that church. Now I'm at this church, and now I'm going to, you know, and I'm treating the church like a club because I'm dissatisfied with people offending me. And mm. so in that environment, I learned that I have to confront my issues. Mm-hmm. How did you do my that? Brother, How- Oh. How did you do that, sir? Explain that to our listeners' audience, because this is powerful, oh. sir. <laughs> Amen. How, how, how did you do that, sir? When you, because that that is an enclosed environment. I, I I used to teach in the prisons in 1979. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. As a young man, you know, of course, we when you go behind them cells and those and those guards are looking at you, they're actually. Mm-hmm waiting on those prisoners. They're making sure those prisoners don't act out of order. How did, how did you do? Talk to us, man. This, this is powerful. <laughs> Amen. So, mm. so as, as Christians, obviously, in, in, a, in a prison culture, you know, and I don't think a lot of people know this, but prison mm. culture, number one, everybody, believe it or not, mm. you're, you're, it's about respect, number one. Correct? Yes, sir. It's about treating each other as men if you're in a, in a, man, in a men's institution. We look at each other as men. So that, that's actually a good setup for the Christian when he's practicing his faith in places like that. And so when we found ourselves within our Christian community um, at Ox, you know, with each other, we, we, know how to, we know how to come first and foremost to our brother in private. We, we wow. know how to say, hey, wow. let me talk to you. Can we, can we come down here and, and, and have a conversation? And if they're willing, then yes, you, you'll get that conversation. And, and nine out of 10, you're going to win that brother over because that's how it's set up for us in that culture anyway. It's like, we want to, yes, let's talk first before there's some other foolish actions. Like you learn that right away. Right. Yes, sir. And so as Christians, you know, it, it's, it's sometimes you, you have to push past your emotions. Yes, and you have to come into an agreement. How can we walk together unless we be in agreement? So we, we just always made sure that if there was an issue, we'll, we'll do it biblically. We'll talk to you first, Amen. one-on-one, as, as men. And if we can't Amen. resolve it and, and we continue to bicker back and forth, we know how to grab a neutral party to come and mediate the, the next meeting. Amen? Because it tells you to Hallelujah. go grab a witness. Hey, yes. man, that's what the Bible tells us. So yes, nine out of ten, it, it always stops there if, if we can't get a one-on-one resolve. And so Hallelujah, a lot of it, sir. doctor, it's all about just being bold. You know, and love causes you to be bold because you want to confront something in order to make it right. See, that's the heart of the Christian. Let's make it right. We have been given the ministry of what? Reconciliation. So if there's a falling out, the Christian should have the heart to say, no, I love too much to let this, to let this go. Let me go talk about it. And you know what? As much as it hurts sometimes, Pastor, in my experience, yes, sometimes sir. I have to apologize for things that I didn't even do. Amen. Hallelujah. Now <laughs> that takes I'm, a strong man. Amen. And, I, and, it, and it's for the sake of peace. Live Great at God. peace amongst all men as much Live as it depends peace. on you. That's what the word tells me, Pastor. Thank you, brother. Like that, amen. brother. Amen. Ladies and amen. gentlemen, if you're just tuning in with us, amen, we like to thank, amen, a special person that's tuning in with two special people, amen, Mrs. Monique Washington, amen, and Arthur, Mrs. V. Speak Life, amen. We'll give a shout out to her, amen. Brian Irby, praise God. Thank you for stopping by on tonight, amen. And we thank Everyone for tuning in with this happy birthday, man. Also to Brian Irby, amen. Gary Artis, amen. We thank him for stopping by. Artist Joel, Joe, Robert Davis, amen. Keith Solomon, praise God. We thank everyone for tuning in. You just heard, amen, uh, from Artis, amen. Uh, Miguel Perfect. The question is, amen, uh, how, as leaders, why is it wise to resolve? conflict peacefully amen and forgiveness we're coming out of matthew 5 21 and 23 share this share this file on tonight this is a powerful powerful
powerful file and message. So begin to share it. Amen. He basically gave us some powerful pointers. Amen. Uh, he basically said he would show love. And I like that. Well, amen. We, we should be mature enough to resolve conflict peacefully first, first by showing love. We shouldn't be immature about this. Because, as he said, Mr. Miguel said, we should have, first and foremost, as leaders, spiritual leaders, we should have a relationship with God. Amen. And he went on to say, God, amen, God love causes us to draw near each other. I like that. Amen. And lastly, man, he used a prison analogy. Amen. A man coming out of prison. Amen. And powerful, strong man, amen, such as Paul, the Apostle Paul, amen, behind prison bars. This brother, I feel in my spirit, amen, can write books that would change lives. Brother, write write those books, man, amen, amen. praise God, amen. He said in prison, he resolved conflicts, amen, sometimes he would go to people in private or that person in private, amen, that is powerful. That's powerful. Come in agreement. Let's reason together, my brother. Amen. And, and lastly, Amen. he said, love causes us to be bold. You talking about resolving conflict peacefully. That I, I like that. Amen. Praise God. That's awesome. Praise God. Amen. Mr. John Ross, Apostle John Ross. Amen. I know this brother. You talking about a, a man of God who's in his word. Amen. Coming out of Matthew 5, 21 to 23, sir. Jesus is actually teaching about anger, but he put it in a, in a way of forgiveness, amen, and he went as far, Mr. John Ross, he laid it down, amen, he basically said, bless those, amen, bless those who persecute you, amen, but he had to, he had to let the people know that you have heard that it was said to the old, you should not commit murder, and whosoever murder would bring danger upon the, upon the judgment, but I say unto you, Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, for no reason. <laughs> Just a, I'm gonna let John Ross. I'm passing the mic to you, sir. Amen. What a what a as leaders, why is it wise to resolve conflict peacefully, sir? And you know, asking for forgiveness and seeking forgiveness in your own word. Keep, speak to the nation, sir. We go to Dr. Kelly in Matthew, the fifth chapter, in the 24th verse, it declares to leave your gift there in front of the altar and first go and be reconciled to them and then come and offer your gift, which means to make peace with those whom you have offended. Then offer your gift to the Lord. And then in the 25th verse, it says, reconcile quickly with your adversary while you are still on the way to court. Otherwise, he may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison. Now, Romans, the 12th chapter in the 17th verse says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Carefully consider what is right in the eyes of everybody. In Romans, the, the 18th verse, the same 12th chapter, but in the 18th verse, it says, if it is possible on your part, live at peace with everyone. Matthew the 18th chapter declares that if thy brother shall trespass against thee so and tell him his faults, go tell him his faults between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. A good teaching, Dr. Kelly, on this topic declares to us next man up that we cannot sacrifice with a sense of wrongdoing. Sacrifice meaning to worship, to minister, to preach, to lead the congregation, etc. Jesus is saying God will not receive you or receive you in regards to your created purpose or whatever it may be with evil and wickedness and vindictiveness in your heart and in your mind. You must make peace with those whom you have wronged before you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is declaring that God will not receive you or your worship until you do 
period. Now, to be reconciled is taking it to the next level because yes, it is not enough to see in this command only a command to remove ill will and bitterness, but yes, there must be also a confession of wrong and the endeavor to make amends mm, to bring mm. about reconciliation or atonement from spiteful words, from malicious and poisons used to kill and slander one another and, mm. and, and secretly behind the scenes kill one another slowly. That is the same with God. We seek God while we are alive because we cannot make peace and reconciliation with God once we are dead. Woo. Woo. Good gracious, good Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Ooh, so it is, it's a dangerous thing, amen, in the, in the doctrine or practice to disregard intentionally to break at least those, those God's commandments. Jesus yes. had talked about that earlier, amen. That was powerful. That's powerful. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard Hallelujah. from talk show host, amen, Apostle John Ross. He talked about, amen, as leaders, why is it wise to resolve conflict peacefully? He, I, I like your analogy, sir. I like your spiritual analogy and your wisdom because you talked about that sacrifice and that worship. God would not receive us with wickedness in our heart until we reconcile, amen, or repent, amen. But yeah. gentlemen, I, 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 got a, I got a real twist in this thing, amen, just amen. a real, it, it, it's kind of, it's one thing, amen, y'all remember uh, Brother Miguel, amen, John Ross. You guys remember when David had returned back with the Ark of the Covenant, amen. First, first, first Chronicles 15 and 29 It's that last verse. Thank you, Holy Ghost, amen. John Ross, amen, Mr. Mr. Perfect, y'all remember when when David returned the Ark of the Covenant, and this is just a sidebar, just a sidebar, he was praising God. He yes. was giving God all the praise, amen. As a matter of fact, his partner was with him, Jonathan, amen, Saul's son. And he was praising God. This is, this is going to help somebody on tonight because I'm tagging both of you all, amen, from y'all example. Amen. And that, in that text, it, it read in First uh, Chronicles 15 and 29, amen. Remember with Miguel, I'm just paraphrasing, Michelle, she looked out the window. It, and it should be just that last verse, First Chronicles 15 and 29, as she yes. looked out of the window, and she saw David paraphrasing, dancing, and, and celebrating. But it was something that was in her heart. And the scripture said she despised him. Good yes. Lord Almighty. In her heart. Gentlemen, what are we saying? Jesus, Jesus was powerful with his teaching. He was talking to a group of people who had despised in their heart. Their actions, amen, her actions toward her companion, amen, she despised him in her heart. Come on, man. In other words, she didn't even have to say anything. It was in her heart that she could not find a way to show her man that she loved him or she, she's worthy of him recovering this Ark of the Covenant. Gentlemen, have you all been there? When you felt somebody in their heart, this is this is not real. You ain't showing that. You ain't showing me that you've forgiven me. You're not showing that. But you know what? I'm going to forgive you anyway. Have, have Gentlemen, have you all been there? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Amen. Yeah. In, in other words, John Ross, you hit it on the nose. Mr. Perfecto, Mr. Perfect, you let, you let it off, sir. Praise God. Amen. By the example of showing the love. She did not show the love. Her heart, the scriptures simply said she despised him, despised him. Now, she accepted him as a warrior. But when it came right. to his praise and worship, when it came to giving God the praise, amen, oh, why are you angry? Why are you angry at me? Why are you angry mm. at the, the man of God or the, or the woman of God? 
This man is now. a producer, Mr. Jerry Royce. Why are you angry at this man? He's giving us a on. platform. Come on, somebody. Man. Where man. is this anger coming from? <laughs> you talk man. about it. Talk about it. <laughs> you don't even, that, that person don't even have to say nothing. It's just in mm-hmm. their heart. It's in their action. Praise God. Which brings me to the next, this next question. And 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 we like I said we we gonna dig deep on tonight. They, y'all go ahead and yeah. hear this. Go ahead and come on, sing Jesus. This thing out, Amen. How should our actions, Amen? I'm gonna take this back to Mr. Perfecto. How, Mr. Uh, Miguel? How should our actions display forgiveness? What should something should reflect? My God, Amen, <laughs> Amen. If that person done us wrong, what are what are our actions? What should it look like? That we really don't forgave them, bro. Talk to us, man. <laughs> come, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. You know, this is, such a powerful, us, man. <laughs> this, this is such a powerful, powerful subject, a subject of forgiveness. And it's, it's not a light subject because there are, there are stipulations yes, sir. to forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Amen. And unfortunately, doctor, you know, that again, you know, judgment starts in the house of God first. Yes, so we have to first address our Christian brothers and sisters because, mm-hmm. you know, there's so much unforgiveness still in the church. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're, we're constantly praising God at the same time and, and not realizing that. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not the judge, but I just know that Jesus said, if you don't forgive... Neither shall my heavenly father forgive you. My Lord. And if you don't have God's forgiveness, there's only one place you're going when you leave this world. My, my, my. Amen. And and so Christians are fooled in the church. And I don't personally just by what the scriptures tell me, Mm. a lot of people are going Mm. to be with him. And that's why... This subject is pressing. This subject of forgiveness is pressing. And forgiveness means to send away. Come on. Some of us haven't sent some things away. So when I forgive somebody, doctor, I don't, I don't bring back that thing that I forgave you for. Come on. Because I've already sent it away. I am, yeah. I'm, I'm, now I'm not God. I, I can't forget like God does. We God. Human. <laughs> yes, and he, yeah. he casts our sins into the sea of forgetfulness to remember no more. Thank God for that. Because when I'm oh, pouting man. and saying, Lord, I done did this and I done did that. God's looking at me like, I don't remember that. Please. Amen. Because Amen. my sins have been forgiven. But <laughs> me as a human and what the devil likes to do is still stir up emotions, Thank feelings, you. thoughts, your past, amen, and make mm. you think that you haven't forgiven yet. So for me, I know that when I forgive, I send that thing away, and I'm going to make sure that I do not bring that thing back up because I've forgiven you. Yes, now, sir. if I feel some type of way about you when I see you because of, you know, I have to check myself because I'm saying, wait, <laughs> I, I'm forgiving this person. Yes, sir. I'm not going to allow the devil to stir up feelings in my heart when I see you. Because yes, that's sir. not going to display true forgiveness. Amen? Amen. Because that's how yes. people are. They, if, if you're removed from something long enough, the feeling might fade. But let that thing come back and let it test you. Amen? Yes, You're going to know for sure whether you've forgiven or haven't forgiven. Yes, Amen. And, and, and I love God because, you know, he always gives us a retake. Yes, sir. Amen. There, there, there's sometimes a boomerang effect with God. So, some things leave, but they come back. And we have to make sure that we've drawn close enough to the Lord and that we've allowed him to purge and change our hearts and renew our minds so that when these things come back, we're able to withstand the test. Hallelujah. We're able to prove that, no, we have been changed. We have been, we have been forgiven. And I do forgive you. 
Mm-hmm. Hey man, trust me, doctor. I, you know, and again, <laughs> in my experience, there's so much bitterness that I grew up in that place with. Wow. There's so many friends that I hated. I literally had a plan to take vengeance on oh. them the moment I got out of prison. So yes, God wow. had to change my heart. He had to change my mind. He threw away my plan. And mm. then, and now Hallelujah. my plan was to show love, Praise to God. show them I'm different. I have so many friends. Well, I don't consider them friends, friends, but there's so many people I used to know that I run into now. And mm. sometimes in their own convictions, they say, hey, man. I want to tell you I'm sorry that I wasn't there for you all those years. Praise Amen. God. Amen, God, sir. God, God, God allows that because yes, he sir. wants me to display forgiveness. Mm. He wants Praise me to show them, nah, brother, that wasn't your fault. Mm. It wasn't your fault I landed there. Praise you God. know what I'm saying? You don't have to ask me for forgiveness. I forgi- I for- I forgiven you because you don't know what I had to deal with in my mind. Amen. So, Amen, so sir. We, we, we have to be of the, of the type to say, you know, Lord, if, if forgiveness is in you first and foremost, here's the key doc. And I'm going to be quiet. The key is not really in my forgiveness. <laughs> Amen. I'm going somewhere with this. It's, yes, it's not my forgiveness that can forgive you because within myself, I can't forgive a person. I can't forgive anyone. But when I understand that it was his forgiveness towards me, that it's the forgiveness of Jesus that now lives in me that causes me to forgive any person for any kind of wrong that he's either committed to me or somebody in this world. Now, Praise that God. is the power of the Holy Ghost. Because yes, I can't do is. it, Doc. I can't Amen. do it. I'm going to hold a grudge until the grave. But thank God for Jesus yes, that has sir. given me the ability to forgive because he's forgiven me. Praise God. Amen. amen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miguel. Amen. It sounds like, amen, have you ever been into a restaurant, amen, and you saw that person that wronged you come into the restaurant and all uh-huh. of a sudden, you done, you done paid for this expensive <laughs> meal. You done paid for this expensive <laughs> meal in your family. And here come the person that wronged you, and you stop eating. No. <laughs> it's still there. It's still in your heart. It's you still there. Stop, it's still there. Stop it, man. You done paid for No, no. <laughs> in your spirit. Amen. Mr. John Ross, thank you, sir. That was powerful. Mr. John Ross, amen. Share that with us, amen. How should our actions display? What should be in our heart, sir, to display that we have forgiven, amen. We have forgiven someone, amen, to show, amen, that our actions display this, amen. We did, did, Talk to us, Doc, and we're going to go through a song break, sir, right after this. Dr. Kelly, we have to understand that to trespass means to be in violation of another person's rights, including social or moral ethics. To trespass is to knowingly violate another person, to manipulate and scheme against the other person, forcing Mm -hmm. entry into their space, their family, their rights, and to undermine and sabotage their ministries, their careers, and so on and so forth. But now, under we must understand at the same time that forgiveness is a conscious, deliberate act and decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards another person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness or not. But understand and hear me when I say forgiveness does not mean to gloss over serious offenses or um, uh, condoning or excusing wrong behavior. It is not a obligation of reconciliation unless yes, God commands it in a particular case or situation, nor is it to be a uh, viewed as a get-out-of-jail-free card or legal liabilities 
or wow. obligations. In the realm of the spirit, Dr. Kelly, I can hear in the realm of the spirit those Amen. that are Amen. We got to bring it home, Doc. Doc John, yeah, we got to bring it home. Out, those that are out home, there Harry. in go, go radio land on. saying, how do I forgive? How do yes, I sir. know if I have forgiven? Does God mm-hmm. want me to stay in a bad and toxic or abusive relationship as a sign of forgiveness? Do I reconcile, and how do I reconcile? Do I have to tolerate ongoing attacks? And what are my options of recourse? Dr. Kelly, I am walking and living this right now as we dialogue on this topic, and I can Mm. identify with those who are going through this in this season, and I pray that I have answered at least some or given some direction (laughs) to some of these questions that the Holy Spirit has given me in the realm of the Spirit, that there's some people out there in Radio Land that are asking these very questions. Oh, praise God. You have done that so eloquently, sir. And we thank you, amen, and Mr. Amen. Miguel, perfect. That was very profound, amen. John 15 and 9, amen, as we close out, Mr. Miguel pr- closes out in prayer. John 15 and 9 reminds us, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. In other words, there is a name I love to hear, and I love to sing his word. Oh, it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love him because he first loved me. Thank you all for joining with us on Next Man Up. Amen. We're going to close out this platform. Amen. In a quick prayer. Amen. By artist Miguel Perfect. We thank both of these gentlemen, John Ross and Amen. John Perfect for joining us tonight. Amen. And we're going to. We'll do a part two on this. So it's coming up a part two. Amen. Amen. Mr. Miguel, perfect us. Amen. Pray us out, sir. Father, we just thank you for this time that you've given to us, Lord. We are just grateful, Lord, that you've given us the words of life to speak one to another, to speak to the nations, to speak to our neighbors. Father God, we ask that something today has went out and reached the hearts of those that have heard you tonight, Lord. We pray for those who are struggling with unforgiveness right now in the name of Jesus, we pray you would break their hearts and that you would give them a new heart, Father God, that they would be able to forgive those that may have done them wrong and that they would be set free from that spirit of unforgiveness, even within your body, Lord. And so we're just thankful right now. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to forgive, to give, that gives us the power to love, that gives us the power to give, that gives us the power to show kindness and compassion yeah. and mercy. And so we're just so thankful, Lord, that you rescued us, and we trust yeah. that tonight you have rescued at least one soul. And if that is so, Lord, we know that all of heaven rejoices at this very moment. And so we're thankful in the name yeah. of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our time. Stay where you at. Amen. Coming up, amen, late night with Jerry Royce live. Paula G. Amen. She has a special guest with her on tonight. Greetings to Tiffany Coleman. This is our time. Good night. God bless you and God bless this nation. All right, family, family, family. Thank you so much for tuning in to Next Man Up. Right, coming up next, late night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide and 